What is Pandas? Why and how should you use it? Keep watching to find out. Hi, my name's Giles McMullen, and on this channel I talk about everything related to Python. There's a set of Python tutorials where you can learn Python for free from scratch. I also review other learning materials like courses and books. We talk about data science, machine learning, and everything you can think of that's related to Python. If that sounds interesting, then do consider subscribing. But in this video, we're going to talk about Pandas, what it is, what it's used for, and how to use it. Pandas is a Python library that gives you a fantastic set of tools to do data analysis. In fact, if you're going to work with data using Python, then you're going to need to learn Pandas. And that's data analysis, data science, machine learning. If it involves data, you'll need to know how to use Pandas. Trust me though, once you know Pandas, you won't want to use anything else. You certainly won't want to go back to Excel, and Pandas is free. With Pandas, you can load, prepare, manipulate, model, and analyze data. You can join data, you can merge data, you can reshape data, you can take data from different databases and put it together and analyze it. You can do pretty much anything you want to with data, and it all revolves around a structure called a data frame. Let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to show you how to use pandas very briefly uh, on this Titanic XLS file. So this is a file, an Excel file, that shows the passengers on board the Titanic. It has what class they were in, whether or not they survived, their names, their sex and age, and so on. Uh, so there's a lot of information uh, about the passengers. It's the entire passenger list. And there are just over 1,300 entries. And this is quite a famous data set. So let's explore it. We're going to go to our Jupyter Notebook, and we're going to import NumPy as NP. We're going to import pandas, uh, which is what we're interested in here, as PD. So we've created a variable called TitanicDF. This read Excel is a pandas function. Uh, and there's a read CSV and other functions that will read different file types. We will run these two cells and then using this uh, method here we can look at the data that we've got. So we've now created a data frame and this is a really important structure in pandas and when you learn more about pandas you'll learn all about data frames. And these are the data frames that you can merge and join and do all sorts of things with. It's a really, really useful tool. And so we can see here that we've got the first five records of this data set. And the next thing we can do is we can describe the data set. So it'll tell us the count. We can see we've got 1,046 age records, um, so a little short of the full amount. We get the minimum age and the maximum age and then the quartiles there. So that's quite useful. And if you look at the fares, that's quite interesting. So the mean fare was 33 pounds, I guess, um, but the maximum fare was 512. Now, using this drop command, we are going to get rid of some of the data from our data frame because it's not going to be that relevant. So we're going to get rid of the ticket column, the cabin column, the boat column, and the body column, and then we're going to have a look at what's left. So let's have a look at that. We now have a new data frame with less information, but it's more relevant information. So we've, we've trimmed the data frame a little. Let's carry on. So we're going to have a look now at doing a plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this value counts function on our data frame, but I'm going to do it just on the survived column, and then I'm going to plot it using a bar plot. Let's run that. And there we have the results of that plot. Very quickly you can see uh, that um, where we have a zero, those are the people that died, and where we have a one, those are the survivors. So data visualization with pandas is very quick indeed. Let's have a look now at the proportion of people that survive. Let's get that figure. So we run the mean command on the survived column and we get 38%. So you can see with pandas there are a lot of tools that allow you to do statistical investigation into your data very easily indeed. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to group the data in a different way. I want to group it by uh, the sex of the passenger to see how that affected the outcome. Okay, so what we have here is we have everything now grouped by male and female. I also want to see whether the class of the traveller played a role in their likelihood of survival. So now we do group by, but this time we do it on sex and the class, uh, and we're going to uh, get the mean figures of both. So let's have a look. So now you can see we've broken this down into female, male, and then the class of travel. And this is really revealing, isn't it? So uh, females in first class had a 97% chance of survival, 
whereas men in third class or males in third class had a 15% chance of survival. And finally, let's see what effect age played because they said, didn't they, women and children first. So perhaps uh, we can see whether that was true. So to do that, we do the same command as before, but this time we do it only for ages under 18. And these are the results. So in first class, those under 18, 87.5% um, of them survived. In second class, all of them survived. Um, out of the females and in third class 54% of females under the age of 18 survive. If we look at the males in first class 86% of males survived in first class. In second class it was 73% but in third class it was only 23%. So in a very few lines of code we've managed to really examine our data very well indeed and that's really one of the strengths of pandas. You can do so much with so few commands. Another strength of pandas is working with time series and it's used a lot for this in academia. I want to show you an example now of pandas using time series with an example from the stock market. This is a short example just to show you a few of the things that pandas can do with time series but obviously it can do so much more than this. We're going to have a look at some stock price data. We've got Apple and Microsoft and I've used Quandle to import the data. That's already loaded. So let's just have a look at the header of uh, Microsoft, the share price, just to see what we've got here. Okay, so we can see the first five entries. The data goes back to 1986. We've got open, high, low, close. We've got the volume. We've got the ex-dividend information and the split ratio. We've got the adjusted prices as well. So we've got a lot of information there. Um, now, I just want to plot the adjusted close price from Microsoft. So let's have a look at that and see, see how we do that. And as you can see, it's very easy. We just take the data frame name. We choose the column name that we want, and we just type plot next to it. And if we do that, we get a nice graph going back to 1986 up to the present uh, and showing us the price of Microsoft. Okay, now let's have a look at the index of Microsoft because this is the key bit. If we type ms.index, that tells us that the index is a date time index. So this data has been loaded into our data frame with the index being the date. Uh, and that's really useful. And what that means is we can do some very interesting things. So, for example, if we just wanted to see the price of Microsoft in 2018, we can just choose 2018, just like that. Uh, and Pandas does the rest for us. So let's have a look. And that's the price in 2018. If we just want to have a look at the price in March in 2018, then we just put in 2018 slash 03. And Pandas does the work for us, and there it is. That's the price in March. And if we wanted to do a range, say from the beginning of 2018 to the end of March, again, we just put in the range that we want. Uh, we put the column that we want to plot, and we type plot, and Pandas does that for us too. What I want to do now, I want to combine both stocks into one data frame so I can see that information plotted together. Uh, and here I'm going to join MS price with Apple price. Uh, and if we run that now, we have this data frame. And now we just want to plot it. And there you have the plot of the two stocks. OK, now what if we wanted to just look at what happened to the price in 2017, for example? Well, we do what we did before. We can have a look just at the 2017 data. Uh, and then what other things might we want to do? Well, you can do a rolling average. Let's have a look at the rolling average. And there it is. Uh, and if you wanted to do a rolling standard deviation to see how much the stock prices move on a daily basis, well, you can do that too. And you can see there straight away that Apple is a little more volatile than Microsoft. This example really is just to show you how powerful Pandas is. Now, that should give you some idea of the capabilities of Pandas. Obviously, we've only scratched the surface, and there's no way I can possibly show you everything that Pandas can do. But I hope I've shown you enough to whet your appetite to go on and learn Pandas. If you want to learn Pandas, then start at the Pandas website. I put a link to the website in the description of this video. It's free and they cover every aspect of Pandas in a lot of detail. There's even a sort of 10 minute quick start guide, which you know is the best place to start. Also, I would recommend a book by Wes McKinney. Now, Wes McKinney is the man who wrote the Pandas library. So he knows all about Pandas and his book is fantastic. There's a review of his book on this channel and you can take a look at that too. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do press the 
that like button. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. There are over 100 videos on this channel all about Python. There are Python tutorials. There are reviews on books about Python. There are reviews on courses. There are videos about why Python's good for data science. And there are videos about machine learning. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button. Check out the videos on the screen now that you can see. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.